Today I'm sitting down with Jack Shaw, author of 122 Years on the Old Bay Line. So how are you doing today? Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Of course. Mm -hmm. So what can you tell, me, tell us about this book? Well, <clears throat> this book covers the history of what was probably the most famous steamship line on Chesapeake Bay. Its formal name was Baltimore Steam Packet Company. That's kind of fancy names they had back in the 1840s when it was founded. But it ran until 1962. It ran overnight passenger and freight steamboats between Baltimore and Norfolk. Uh, you slept on the boat, you had your dinner on the boat, you had your breakfast on the boat, and if you had a car in later years, you'd drive it on the lower deck, sleep on the trip down, get your car and head off the rest of, the rest of your trip down south. I got hooked on this because uh, my folks took me on a trip on the boat when I was eight years old, and my mom knew the captain. And well, by, trip was 12 hours long, so before that trip was over, I had managed to get to know the captain, got in the wheelhouse, got to use the big wooden wheel, got to read the radar and blow the whistle. And if an eight-year-old isn't captivated by that, what are they going to be captivated by? And that just led to a lifelong love of ships in general, but particularly these boats on the bay. Wow. So how many years have you researched this specific line of steamship? <laughs> That's a good question because I like to say that it all started with that trip back in 1954. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but I've, I've researched it on and off for years. I've been gathering material, photographs, brochures, memorabilia, you name it. I've got some things that came off the boats and a lot of paper ephemera and that sort of thing. And, and I guess a couple of years ago, my wife finally said to me, look, you've got to stop researching and start writing. And then the pandemic kicked in, and it was a perfect opportunity to really give it my all. So that's, that's how it came to be, when it came to be. Was it, um, was it hard to write a book? I don't think so, but I'm sure it's, come, it's harder for some people than others. This is my third book. Uh, I had one published in 1981, which was about early 20th century transatlantic passenger liners, ships like the Titanic and the Lusitania and the like. And then in uh, 2015, my book called Lost Chester River Steamboats was published by the same company. And now this one, and there's a couple more ideas germinating for down the road, but we'll see how that plays out. But it didn't come particularly hard for me because I've, I've been a writer most of my life. I was in broadcast journalism for years. and. It, it just comes natural. <laughs> so something that you um, think is really interesting is the il illustrations in this book. Yeah, the illustrations, I think, are a huge part of the book. Uh, the, it hasn't been treated in book form for years, and I thought the time was right to, to do something like this. You've got so much more at your disposal now, thanks to things like the Internet and whatnot. So we've got color and black and white, which is interesting considering the time period in which these these ships ran. But the thing I, I'm, I'm most happy about is that I, as I say on the front cover, featuring the photography of Hans Marx. He was a photojournalist back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s and specialized in maritime subjects and lived in Baltimore. Uh, passed away quite a while ago and I always liked his illustrations and just in a, on, a, on a lark I tried to find his, his, his family and I found his daughter who is the executor of his estate and they opened up his entire collection to me and wow. said, go at it. Wow. And it would be a much less of a book without his pictures. So besides the story of when you were eight on the steamship, why are you more interested in steamship than any other type of boat or line on the bay? I take in all the boats on the bay, the different lines. Like I said, the other one was Chester River steamers. That's just, you know, Baltimore to Chestertown. That was one river. But they had steamers up and down all of the rivers on the Chesapeake Bay. It wasn't a day that went by in the old days that there wasn't a ship going up these rivers. And why did they go up the rivers? Because it was a lifeline to the rural communities. Places like the Chop Tank, the Chester, the Wicomico. You know, back then when there was no Bay Bridge, there was no, no railroad, there was no airplane or anything. You had two ways to get to the other shore. You either took a sailing ship directly across, and if you did that, you never knew when you were going to get there because the sailing ship was at the mercy of the wind. Or you took a stagecoach. Imagine that, all the way up around the bay, on top of the bay, mm -hmm. and come down. And you either had to contend with muddy roads, dirt, um, rain, snow, sleet, whatever. It wasn't a particularly pleasant trip. So that's why these steamers were on the bay. They weren't pleasure trips, per se. They weren't going to an amusement park or anything of that nature. They were coming to these rural communities to um, allow the farmers and the watermen on this side of the bay to put their products on the ship and it taken back to Baltimore and they knew it was going to get there by a specific time. Conversely, when the ship came back, it brought things over to the shore that weren't readily available here, construction materials and, and, and raw materials and, and that sort of thing. So until you got into the 
pretty much the early 1920s, the boat was, was the way. So if these boats are so important, how come they didn't last 123 years? <laughs> well, they were, they were flourished, literally. From well, The earliest steamboat on the bay was 1813. They flourished until about 1923. Well, what, what happened then was, uh, after World War I, the automobile came in, in, into being. More roads were being paved on the rural communities like the Eastern Shore. Um, you had railroads that were taking away business, airlines took away business, and after World War II, things like the cost of building ships, the cost of crewing ships just went through the roof, and a lot of the companies just couldn't, couldn't afford it. Bay, old Bayline was the last one. The last, prior to that, the, the last overnight steamship company in the country was up on Long Island Sound, and it folded in 1942. These guys stayed another 20 years because they were doing it right. They managed to keep it fresh, even though they were, they were running these old boats. But part of what happened to, to them at the end was a com combination of a lack of business, the fact that it had been taken away by the roads and the, and the trains and everything. The boats were old. When they tied their ships up at the end of 1962, they had two steamers. One was built in 1911, one was built in 1913. And when you get a vessel that old, maintaining it, getting it, up so that it'll meet Coast Guard regulations, it got to be very, very, very difficult. The line probably would have long, lasted longer because it was owned by three railroads. And if the three railroads had decided that they wanted to build a new vessel, they probably could have done it. But there was contention back and forth between the three owning railroads about what course to, to, to uh, pursue. And I think at the end they said, let's go ahead and liquidate the bay line and take care of the, the assets that way. <clears throat> Um, something fun that a lot of people might not know that is that Old Bay Seasoning is actually named after the Old Bay Line. That is true, and I wish they'd put a steamer on the can sometime. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the deal was that the Old Bay was founded by, I believe he was a German immigrant in Baltimore, and he had a, a, a little store or shop on, on Light Street, down near where the Hyatt Hotel and the Howe Harbor Place is now. And the Old Bay Line Pier was right across the street from him, and he's made this, this seasoning. He thought, this is pretty good. We're going to have to see if we can get, get this out before a larger audience. And he had McCormick Spice Company right next door, so he had to come up with something that they didn't have. Mm -hmm. And he came up with this seasoning, and he thought, look, Old Bay, that's a good name. And that's how it came to pass. And what's really funny was maybe 15, 20 years ago, after this guy was independent all those years, McCormick finally came in and yeah. bought it. I'm hoping that places like Edwards are going to carry it in town. Okay. Uh, there's a couple places up in Chestertown. The, the bookstores of the Maritime Museums in the Bay, I'm hoping that they're going to carry it. And it's available on Amazon. Okay. I want to thank Jack Sean for coming out today. And go ahead and pick up the book, 122 Years on the Old Bay Line, today.